These past couple of patches have been absolutely massive, and the meta has shifted drastically as a result. You know we've got you guys covered though, as we'll be breaking down three of the best solo carries for every role in 14.11. And remember, if you're struggling to climb in League, Skill Capped is the only place that guarantees you'll climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. We do this because our service really works, and this is the best time of the season to get in on Skill Capped, as we've just released tons of site exclusive courses designed for you to power learn the most important concepts for climbing in League of Legends stupidly fast compared to those who don't use skill cap. Join today for unlimited access to the world's most famously effective League of Legends guides and remember one subscription gives you access to all of our other games as well. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to stop wasting time being hard stuck and get the rank you actually want. And with that said, let's get into it. One top laner who's been gaining a ton of priority over the past few patches and arguably the best solo carry top laner for 14.11 is Camille. Camille. Even with the nerfs coming through, we don't expect them to significantly alter Camille's solo Q strength. In 14.10, we saw so many top laners hurt by the nerfs to Ghost, removal of the Tenacity Rune, and the removal of Lethal Tempo. Camille was not affected by any of those changes, so she's walked away from the patch better off than most. The early trading power of Camille with her passive shield, grasp proc, and by running Ignite is really nasty. If you just play around your passive and grasp cooldowns, it's so easy to win out on those short trades with Camille. This is very important to understand, because the longer drawn out trades are where you can run into issues, at least early on in lane. The quick burst from Q while you have your passive shield up is difficult for most champs to trade back against, so use it to your advantage. You whittle the enemy down with the short trades, and then once they're in kill range, it's so easy to jump on them with E, pop ignite, and pick up the kill. For a more detailed look at how to trade most effectively as a top laner, our Season 14 trading course is a really great resource to help you out. To be most effective on Camille later in the game, being able to reliably dive the back line of the enemy team is important, so using your band on a meta peel support like Lulu or Janna is good value. The core build for Camille consists of a Trinity Force Rush into Ravenous Hydra second and Sterics Gauge or Spear of Shojin third. For the Rune Page, take Grasp with Shield Bash, Bone Plating, and Overgrowth. Optimal secondaries are Free Boots and Biscuits. Camille is a little more of a high elo skewed champion, so if you are in the lower ranks, one of the best solo carry top laners is Set. Set has been given a bunch of added strength in 14.10 with the introduction of Overlord's Bloodmail. The item is perfect for him because it offers a bunch of bonus AD based on his missing health and allows for Set's W to deal a ludicrous amount of damage. The ideal build that you'll be looking to run for this patch is a Stridebreaker Rush into Hullbreaker second and Overlord's Bloodmail third. This core turns Set into an incredibly strong duelist as the 1v2 strength is even very real if you you are ahead of the curve. Champs that can kite out set and play from range are who you'll run into most issues against, so banning out Kennen or Vayne is good value. The best rune page for set consists of Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand, followed by Second Wind and Overgrowth for secondaries. A champ who's been loving the 14.10 item changes and a phenomenal split push top lane pickup is Trindamir. Phantom Dancer or Infinity Edge changes have been great for Trind, and he hasn't really been missing lethal tempo at all. This is because Grasp actually works great with Trindamir, as it amplifies his quick trading power power in lane. What you can do with Trind early on in lane is stack up your passive on minions, and when Grasp is available, look to trade when the enemy is going for a last hit. Oftentimes, if you can walk up to the enemy, land that Grasp auto, and then use E to disengage, you're going to win the short trade. Using E to retreat from a trade instead of using it to initiate the trade is optimal in a lot of cases, as it gives the enemy very little chance to fight back. Once you've whittled the enemy down, that's when you can look to strike by using E forwards. The core build for Trind is just super OP for a split push champ as you rush Ravenous Hydra so that you can can one-shot waves and sustain up in the side lane, while Phantom Dancer slots in for the mass amount of attack speed, and then Infinity Edge rounds it out so that your autos begin hitting like a truck. Matchup-wise for Trindamir, you really want to avoid Malphite, as his attack speed slow and armor stacking hard counters Trindamir's DPS. There are two really strong rune setups that you can look to run on Trind right now. Grasp is the cookie cutter keystone that you can't go wrong with, but there are some high elo Trindamirs that are liking Phase Rush. By going Phase Rush, you're able to bypass running the nerfed Ghost and instead take Ignite for your second summoner spell. This way, you'll still have some nice sticking power, but some added kill threat as well. Moving on to the jungle now, one of the best junglers that you can play for the current meta is Shin Zhao. Shin has become a lot stronger as of recent for a couple different reasons. The first is that Black Cleaver was just buffed, and he builds the item second in almost every game. ADC item rework has also been quite positive for Shin, because he's one of the best pure ganking junglers in the game. Getting your ADC ahead of the curve is a really great win condition with how OP ADC items are right now, and Shin Zhao is one of the best at making that happen. Using your ban on a support who can nullify your early gank threat, like Morgana or Janna, is a good idea. The standard core build that you should be running on Shin Zhao revolves around a Sundered Sky Rush into Black Cleaver 2nd and Sterics Gauge 3rd. For the Rune Page, run Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight are optimal secondaries.
secondaries. Cracking the solo carry top three for similar reasons to Shin Zhao is Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is another really effective early game ganking jungler and can get the ball rolling for her bot lane extremely easily. Being able to traverse over walls opens up more unique gank paths compared to many other junglers and gives Rek'Sai a really good chance at impacting the early game. We actually have a brand new jungle course on our website that details how you can crush the early game as a jungler, so it's a great resource if you're looking to pick up either Rek'Sai or Shin Zhao. Rek'Sai is a Black Cleaver user too, so she's benefited from the 14.10 buff. Stridebreaker Rush into Black Cleaver second and Steric Gauge third is the standard core build for Rek'Sai. Banning out a support who can foil your early gank plans like Janna or Morgana is a good idea. The rune page is Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, followed by Free Boots and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. Black Fire Torch has burst onto the scene as one of the most OP items for AP junglers, and you should really be taking advantage of it on Lilia. With Talia and Karthus both directly nerfed for 14.11, Lilia is going to be the best Black Fire Torch user. Especially for the lower ranks, Karthus and Talia are much more difficult to pick up and find success with right away, while Lilia is a little more noob friendly. Lilia has held one of the highest win rates for any jungler in Plat and Below over the past patch, and we don't expect that to change moving forward. The new Haste rune, and also the fact that Black Fire Torch has haste, is actually really nice for Lilia now too, because prior to 14.10, she literally had no haste in her build, while all of a sudden, she now has access to 40. A lower cooldown Lilia ultimate is just so impactful for solo queue, as the champ is a completely different monster with her R available. The mix of constant damage output and AoE crowd control potential allows for Lilia to impact team fights extremely well. Fishing for catch plays with E prior to objective spawning has literally zero risk, but all the reward. If you can land that E on the enemy fed carry and follow up with your R, it can single-handedly win you games. The core build that you should be running on Lilia consists of a Blackfire Torch Rush into Leandru's second and Rylai's third. Lilia really likes playing into comps that lack gap closers, as it makes landing your E so much easier, so using your ban on a meta champ like Ari is a good value. The optimal rune page for Lilia has you taking Conqueror with Triumph, Haste, and Coup de Gras, while Free Boots and Cosmic Insight are for secondaries. Moving into the mid lane top 3 for 14.11, who's benefited greatly from the recent item changes is Uxian. It feels like Uxian was one of the more forgotten champions when it came down to those who would benefit from 14.10, as he's loved the direction of everything. Kraken, Blade of the Rune King, Infinity Edge, and the Collector changes have all been great for Uxian, as he can run many different setups and adapt to each game very well. Kraken gaining the movement speed feels really nice and in combination with the slow from Blade of the Rune King helps Uxian kite out situations a lot easier. With the Collector and Infinity both nerfed for 14.11, core build of Kraken and Blade should become an even higher priority. If you're against a very squishy enemy team comp, running a heavy AD stack build to where you can just one-shot everything in sight is viable as well. Matchup wise for Uxian, Brand and Yasuo are two of the more difficult lanes for him in meta right now, so banning either one of them is good value. Press the Attack is the best keystone rune for Uxian, while the rest of the rune page consists of Presence of Mind, Alaska, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Bone Plating, and Overgrowth. One of the bigger surprises heading into 14.11 is the fact that mid lane brand has not been nerfed in any way, shape, or form. If you're Emerald or below and are looking to climb from mid lane right now, brand is a no brainer to add to your champion pool. Brand is relatively easy to pick up, has an incredibly powerful core build, team fights better than most mid laners, and can actually lane quite well into many of the more annoying melee mids. Most mages really struggle against the higher mobility melee mids, but brand actually has a positive win rate against Yasuo, Silas, Katarina, Zed, and Yone. It's really just the longer range mages who can sit back at max range who Brand struggles more against, so banning out Lux or Syndra is good value. Our challenger mid laner Shori, who is a huge Brand mid advocate, has a new Blackfire Torch commentary out for the champ on our website, which can really help you out. After rushing the Blackfire on Brand, you should build into Leandri's second and then Rylai's third. The standard rune setup revolves around Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch, followed by Presence of Mind and Coup de Gras. Rounding out the top three for mid lane as we head into 14.11 is Vex. If you simplify Brand and Vex as your two core mid lane champions for this patch, you're setting yourself up really nicely. Brand can be used as more of a blind pick, while Vex is one of the best counter pick mids in the entire game. It's actually ridiculous how strong of a champ Vex is when played into mids with dashes. Vex has been absolutely stomping all over Yasuo, LeBlanc, Akali, Katarina, Silas, Zed, and Yone, and those champs are all played quite often in solo queue. It's just the longer range pick champs that are of troubles for Vex, so banning out Lux or Syndra is what we'd advise. When you're in those melee matchups, you can really dominate lane. However, if you're against a ranged mid, you can more so just look to permashove with Q and try to generate a lead off roams or by playing around your jungler. The optimal build for Vex consists of a Luden's Rush into Shadowflame second, and then it's situational from then on out. Rune Page revolves around Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter, while Mana Flow and Transcendence are for secondaries. The Collector and Infinity Edge both being nerfed for 14.11 will affect a bunch of the top tier 
your ADCs. However, one who walks away unscathed is Ash. Ash has been a very solid ADC as of recent, and she should take an added step forward this patch due to many other champs dropping in power. The new Kraken Slayer has turned out great for Ash, as she hasn't minded losing the crit while gaining the movement speed is really nice for an ADC who lacks a gap closer. You can run the three item core of Kraken, Trinity Force, and Terminus to some really great success right now. With more melee supports coming back in meta over the past patch, it's been really nice for Ash, as she's an ADC who wants to press early on in lane. You don't really have to worry about banning any specific ADC right now, and instead can prioritize your ban towards a pick support like Blitz or Pike. Losing access to Lethal Tempo has not negatively influenced Ash at all as she runs press the attack, and it's working perfectly for her. Even with the nerfs to the Collector and Infinity Edge coming through, we don't expect the relative strength of Jin to fall that much, so he's back in the top 3 for 14.11. With a plethora of other ADCs also being negatively affected by the changes, it's more so just going to bring down the power of the role as a whole instead of nerfing a few champs in specific. Jin does get hit a bit harder than some due to the fact he builds both the Collector and Infinity Edge, but even then the nerfs are pretty light. With the Collector losing some lethality for next patch, we may actually see players prioritize the Infinity Edge rush a lot more. The Collector has been so good as a rush due to that early lethality, but with the stat being nerfed, there's less incentive to build the item. A build that we will be keeping an eye on for Jin this patch that we think has a lot of potential consists of an IE rush into Fire Cannon second and Yuntal Wild Arrows third. Yuntal is currently the best performing third purchase on Jin in solo queue, but it's not getting very much attention just yet. With Jin in such a great spot in meta right now, our Master and Minutes guide couldn't have come out at a better time, as it's just been uploaded to our website and walks you through everything you need to know to begin smashing solo queue with Jin. As for Jin's rune page, Keystone rune is Fleet Footwork with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras, Roll with Celerity and Gathering Storm for secondaries. Even with the direct nerf to her AD growth, we expect Jinx to remain a top tier ADC and she rounds out the top 3 for 14.11. AD growth is being lowered by 0.25, so you'll be losing 4 AD at level 18, which is a pretty minor amount. It's harder for ADCs to get levels anyway due to laning with the support, so a scaling nerf like this doesn't actually hurt an ADC as much as it would a solo laner. Right now, the most popular core build for Jinx in solo queue has her rushing Kraken Slayer and going Phantom Dancer second, so she doesn't even feel the effects of the item nerfs until much later in the game. IE nerfed hurts her a little, but since Jinx does not build the Collector, she's not hurt as bad by the item changes as others. What's so great about Jinx is that she's such a versatile ADC in the sense it doesn't really matter who you pair up with, she adapts really well to playing with any archetype of support. With a lot of ADCs, you'll notice that they'll have very high win rates with certain supports and much lower win rates with others. Jin, for example, wins a ton with melee and mage supports, but isn't that impressive with enchanters? Jinx, on the other hand, has as good of a win rate with Soraka and Janna as she does with Blitzcrank and Pike. With melee supports, you have some really nice follow-up due to E and W, so capitalizing on catch plays is great. Since Jinx scales incredibly well into the mid to late game, playing with an enchanter who can buff her up and provide her more utility works amazing too. Overall, it just makes Jinx a really solid blind pick ADC and one of the best that you can spam for solo queue. Champs with easy backline access are who Jinx wants to avoid playing against, so using your ban on Camille or Zed is a good idea. The rune page that you should be taking with Jinx consists of Fleet Footwork, followed by Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Cut Down, while Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm are for secondaries. Making a nice push back into meta for support and breaking into the top 3 for 14.11 is Leona. Melee supports saw a nice uptick in strength last patch, with Knight's Vow and Zeke's changes, and Leona was one who benefited. We've also seen a priority shift for ADCs as of recent from where it was a few patches back, which has suited Leona super well. A few patches back, it was Smolder, Ezreal, and Zeri who were being picked a ton in solo queue. Now, as a result of the ADC item changes, these weaker early game picks have disappeared, and we're seeing much more of Jin, Jinx, Kate, Lucian, and Samira, who can all follow up on Leona's engage very well. The standard build for Leona consists of Locket and Knight's Vow, while Solstice Slay is the optimal item upgrade. Supports with strong peel power are who Leona struggles more against, so using your ban on Janna is what we would recommend. The best rune pitch for Leona revolves around Aftershock with Font of Life, Second Wind, and Overgrowth, while Triumph and Haste are for secondaries. These melee supports with strong early game snowball potential are extremely powerful right now, and Blitzcrank is one of them. Getting your ADC ahead is way more rewarding due to the recent item buffs, as they have a lot more power after completing item spikes. If you can play a good Blitz right now, it's extremely valuable, as landing that one hook in lane can heavily dictate the outcome of the game. Losing Moby Boots hasn't even been bad for Blitz either, as Swiftness Boots have taken over and are performing extremely well. The new boots that replaced Moby's called Symbiotic Souls are definitely viable, but Swiftness Boots are outperforming right now, as they just provide more upfront strength to help you snowball the early game. Movement speed is such a key stat for Blitz because it makes the champion so much easier to execute. If you have a ton of movement speed, you don't need to even lead with your hook, as you can just run right up to the enemy, use your
your E and then follow with Q while the enemy is knocked up for the guaranteed grab. So after you rush your swiftness boots, you then build into Trailblazer for even more movement speed, and Locket is generally a good pickup to follow. Celestial Opposition is going to be the support item upgrade. Supports who can nullify Blitz's catch power by their own tankiness and defensive elements are who you should prioritize your band towards, and for the current meta, Braum is a good option. For the rune page, it's Glacial Augment, followed by Hexflash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight, while Nimbus Cloak and Celerity are for secondaries. A support that we've been seeing a lot more as of recent in pro play, and even in solo queue, is Poppy. Poppy's support is rounding out the solo carry top 3 for this patch, as she's by far the most underrated support in the game. Initially, before Camille's support ended up becoming super popular in solo queue and eventually nerfed, we featured her in the solo carry list quite early on, and we've got a similar vibe with Poppy right now. We wouldn't be surprised if the champ really explodes in popularity over the next few patches, so take advantage while you can. Poppy has been good for a while now, but got even better in 14.10 due to the spike in play rate of many melee supports. With Poppy's E and R, she does a really good job at healing melee supports off her carries, while both spells can be used as exceptional engage tools as well. So you've got many ways in which you can approach fights with Poppy, which makes her a very versatile pick. If your ADC is super fed, then you can play back with them and just look to peel. Vice versa, if your ADC is useless and it's your melee dive champs that are most fed, you can play to dive the back line with them. The roam strength of Poppy's support is also extremely deadly as you rush swiftness boots and can get around the map very fast. The first core item in your build is Dead Man's Plate, which adds even more roam strength to the pick. Blood Song is the support item upgrade as the added damage allows for Poppy to capitalize on those catch plays really well. Similar to Blitz, it's champs who can nullify Poppy's catch power that you should prioritize banning right now, and Braum is a great option in that case. For the rune page, Hail of Blades has been seeing a lot more play instead of Aftershock and leading to much better results in the process. It's the skirmish of Poppy support that makes her so strong for solo queue, and by going Hail of Blades with Blood Song, your quick burst is incredibly strong. Alright guys, one last thing, our rank up guarantee is insane. It's like signing up for the gym and getting a refund if you don't get ripped. That's how confident we are in skill cap. We obsess over making the best guides with top players, rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb easy. If you're ready to level up, visit skillcap.com and see the difference. So there you have it guys, a complete look at three of the best solo carries for every role as we head into 14.11. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you back soon.